You're watching Twin Tears Sunday with Leanne DeRosa. Welcome to Twin Tears Sunday. I'm your host, Leanne DeRosa. Spring is here and that means trout fishing season has begun. In this week's episode, I'm gonna get my feet wet and we'll dive into everything you need to know about fishing in New York State. We'll talk about where it begins at the Bath State Fish Hatchery, the types of fish, how they stock some of your local creeks, the gear you need, and we'll wind up on opening day. So join me and let's get started. It all has to begin somewhere and for most of it in New York State, it starts here at the Bath State Fish Hatchery. I'm here with Kenna Osika. Thanks for joining me Hi, today. Welcome. Now tell me, what happens here? You know, we have ponds behind us that have different types of trout swimming around. Uh, tell us really what the whole process um, starts with here at the, okay. the fish hatchery. Well, at this, at this facility, we actually start the fish from eggs. We, we get a lot of eggs in from other fish hatcheries. We uh, get brown trout eggs from other hatcheries, rainbow eggs, but we also take eggs from wild fish and they start here, like I said, as eggs and we raise them all the way up to stockable size, which is about a nine inch fish, which takes about 18 months. So they get a lot of tender loving care at the, at the care at the fish hatchery. And they, we have right now on the facility, we have uh, like 450,000 young brown trout. We have 80,000 brown trout that we're stocking right now that are nine inches long. We have lake trout that we're stocking in the Finger Lakes within the next couple of weeks. We have wild rainbows that are going into the Finger Lakes tributaries for people to catch in the, 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 the upcoming years. And we have some rainbow trout that we stock like in Eldridge Lake and Park Station Pond for the local people to enjoy. Awesome. Now from egg to fish that's heading into some of the creeks you like to fish. How long does that process take? It takes uh, from the egg to the stockable size about, about 18 months. So they, they hatch off here, we take care of them you know, daily. I, I, our, one of our processes is we, we actually clean these raceways and these ponds uh, every day and we, we feed them, we, we take care of sick fish. Uh, we actually have to monitor the water supply, we have to monitor the uh, you know, the, the oxygen in the water. So they, they get a lot of good care here. And we supply fish to, like I said, the Finger Lakes. Uh, we do Stabang County, Schuyler County, Chemung County. We do all the way to Binghamton. We do a lot of the Finger Lakes as well. Plus we supply fish for other, other hatcheries. So like a lot of our, our lake trout go to Lake Champlain as well. And some of our rainbows go to, to areas like the Genesee River. So we, we, as, we as well, you know, raise fish for this area, but also for other areas as well. We start stocking in late March, go, we stock through April, through May, until early June. So we're stocking every day of the week. There's two trucks, three trucks going out every day. And now I went on one of those stocking expeditions. We'll show you that in a little bit. But first, why is it important to start here at the hatchery to grow the fish from eggs, to stock the creeks? You know, why not let Mother Nature take care of that? Well, Mother Nature can do to a degree. There are some streams around here that have some reproduction, that fish are reproducing, and actually there's young fish. But some of them have some problems. You know, there's siltation, there was, you know, deforestation. You know, there's a lot of urban sprawl that has messed up some of the streams a little bit. So we actually kind of supplement the, the wild populations of some streams. In some streams and lakes, we actually, the only fish that are there are because we have stocked them. Uh, there's some holdover fish. So we actually kind of, we, we, we pr provide a nice uh, recreational fishery in areas that no, there norm, normally wouldn't be because of, you know, because of what we've done over the years. You know, there's, uh, like I said, there's some, like the Cohocton River, some of those rivers have really good reproduction. Uh, Cold Brook, which flows right by the fish hatchery here, has reproduction as well, but we supplement it with some wild, um, some of our stock fish as well. So it's kind of, we're helping nature out a little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's go take a look at some of the different fish that they have swimming in the ponds behind us and tell you where you can find them, some of the local creeks around you. Let's go. While Ken says bass are probably one of the most popular fish in the area, the fish hatchery primarily grows trout. That's because they need a little help when it comes to reproducing in most of our local streams. So brown trout, rainbow trout, and lake trout all start here. Okay, these are brown trout that we uh, raise here at the fish hatchery. They are domestic fish, and they, are, they get these as eggs from another fish hatchery uh, in western New York. 
every year we get about 600,000 600, eggs that come into the hatchery in the fall and we raise them from there until stockable size that you see right now. We stock them about 9 to 10 inches long and uh, they are the far, by far the, the most common fish that are stocked in New York State. They're stocked in a lot of the inland streams, uh, the Finger Lakes and also uh, the Great Lakes. So we raise uh, we raise them for like the Cohocton River, uh, Cayuta Creek, uh, Newtown Creek, Sing Sing, Post Creek, uh, Meads Creek. Most of these streams will be stocked before uh, April 1st. And uh, they're very adaptable to all types of conditions. That's not why they're so popular. They can take uh, warmer water, more polluted water, uh, more so than uh, the brook trout that were native to this area many, many years ago. Uh, they're very adaptable fish. Uh, they reproduce in the streams. Uh, fly fishermen love them. So uh, in the fish hatchery system of New York State, this is the most common fish that are raised. Yeah, rainbow trout are, um, we raise about 40,000 of those here at the hatchery. And they are stocked in some local waters like Eldridge Lake and Park Station Pond. They're probably right around nine inches long right now. And uh, they are probably, they're the easiest fish to raise. Uh, the domestic, they do very well in a fish hatchery. They grow very rapidly. And they also could be, as you can see in the picture here, they can be nice and fat, you know, feisty fish. Uh, the only problem is they may not live very long out in the wild. Uh, they're very good fish to stock for people to catch almost immediately. The wild fish, uh, they, they spawn naturally in the Finger Lakes tributaries like Catherine Creek and Cold Brook, Naples Creek. And we actually take eggs from those fish as they spawn in Cayuga Inlet over in Ithaca. And those fish will actually adapt very well to the wild conditions. They will live longer out in the wild and they will, they will reproduce out there as well. The domestic fish will reproduce as well, but we mostly raise these just for, for people to catch immediately and to have a, have a fun time. Whereas the wild fish, we, we actually put them out there to, uh, to grow, to go back into the Finger Lakes to grow to five, six, seven, eight pounds and then that spawn in the spring. So come April 1st, people will be out there fishing for them in all these different streams, like I said, Catherine Creek being the most popular. Lake trout, they're one of the uh, native species to New York State, and the bath fish hatchery is the only hatchery in New York State that actually raises this uh, Finger Lake strain. We raise this strain and we stock them in um, a lot of the Finger Lakes, Canandaigua, Seneca, Cayuga, Owasco. We do not stock Cuca Lake. Cuca Lake has enough wild fish that doesn't need to be stocked. But uh, these are taken from wild fish that spawn in the uh, near Tacanic Falls State Park in Cayuga Lake. And they take the eggs over there. We bring them over here to the fish hatchery. We, we hatch them off and we stock and we raise them, you know, until we stock them in the fall and the spring. And speaking of stocking, when the fish are all grown up, it's time to head out into the wild. So how do you know that there'll be enough fish to fish for? Well, that's why the state stocks the creek. All you gotta do, toss them in. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's still a bunch in here. <laughs> it's not as simple as it looks, though. You gotta really leave them. Oops. Each year, the DEC releases more than one million pounds of fish into the public waterways across New York State. Fish stocking is what we do to replace the trout that have been caught out of the stream because natural reproduction can't keep enough fish available for the fishermen to want to catch some fish. So every year we restock it, the state provides the fish, and we put them back in the creek. From the truck, the fish are counted and divvied up, depending on which stream they're going into. Then bucket by bucket, they're handed out and dumped into the water. Well, we try to put them in areas where there's good water. In other words, there's a nice pools for them if they survive to live in habitat until they grow up a little bit or places for people to fish. The whole stocking process takes place over a nearly two week span in March, right before the season begins on April 1st. And it takes an army to do so. People line up each year to lend a helping hand, 
For most of them, it's not manual labor, it's fun, and a sign that their favorite hobby is about to begin. Because it's a beautiful thing to see fish put in and have the children and the, the, even the grown-ups enjoy the fishing. We don't see many fishermen on this creek until the stocking program starts. Then it's daily loaded with fishermen. But before it's time to head down to the water and have some fun, we need the right equipment. So after the break, we're getting all geared up. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now that the fish are in the water, it's time for us to gear up so we can head out fishing. I'm here at Catherine Valley Outfitters with owner Sean Horahan. Thanks Hi. for helping me out today. Thank you. So now, what are some of the necessities when, you know, for me, I don't have any fishing gear, I don't know about fishing, and I want to head out there. What do I need? I figured probably one of the most common objects is the fishing rod. So tell me about the fishing rods. You know, are there different types of rods for different types of fishing? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple different fishing rods. You've got a spinning rod, uh, there's casting rods, um, fly rods, there's trolling rods, so it just depends on what you're fishing for. Okay, and now um, thinner rods versus thicker rods again. Uh, how do you know if you're just gonna head out to the creek to do some trout fishing, what should you look for in a rod? Well, it varies. I mean, if, if you're gonna be fishing out here, you know, possibly you wanna go, you know, with a light or maybe a, a medium light rod. It just, you know, again, it depends on, you know, the size of fish that you're fishing for. Um, if you're fishing for panfish, you wanna use maybe a light rod or an ultralight. Um, if you're out on lake trolling, um, there's heavier rods that you can use, um, for, you know, that are species specific for what you're fishing for. Okay, and now obviously there's a lot of accessories that go with the fishing rod. Um, Let's go take a look at some of those. We need fishing line, tackle, bait. Tell me more. <laughs> For the fishing rod, you need fishing line. There's different colors and different strengths depending on the fish you're going after. Four pound test um, versus a little bit heavier 10 pound test. Um, 10 pound test, you know, the higher number is a little bit stronger. Um, so 10 pound, eight pound test, um, you know, you want to use um, for bigger fish. You know, again, it's all fish specific on what you're fishing for. If you're fishing for panfish, you want to use a little bit lighter line, whether it be four pound or six pound test. Um, a lot of guys that fish around here will be using the eight or 10 pound or even 12 pound test in the creek. Then you have the sinkers. Sinkers are basically used to add a little bit of weight to the line, so that way um, it enables the fishermen to cast their line out a little farther, or if you're fishing in moving water, it allows you to get your line down and stay um, below the surface of the water. Okay, so next are the hooks, and it looks like there are a lot of different types. So tell me, how do you know which one to choose? Well, it depends, again, on what you're fishing for. Uh, if you're fishing trout season, um, typically the fishermen in this area like to use um, egg hooks. Well, we've got egg hooks in a couple different, uh, different sizes and colors. Um, we have the Eagle Claw laser sharp hooks. Um, we've got them in gold and red and nickel. Um, again, the, the color is just preference for, for fishermen. If they, you know, some fishermen uh, like a, a certain color hook over, over another. Typically, you'll see guys using a size six, um, a size eight, or maybe a size 10 for fishing for trout. When it comes to fishing for trout, um, there's a lot of other baits that you can use and um, we have some of them here. Uh, a lot of fishermen like using uh, trout beads. The, the bright colored beads are meant to mimic um, a salmon egg or a trout egg that's in the water. And with the beads, what you do is you actually take the bead and you slide it up on your line. It mimics a trout or salmon egg that's uh, floating in the water. What the fish are actually doing is they will actually eat trout or salmon eggs in the water, hence why a lot of fishermen um, use salmon eggs when they're fishing for trout. Um, so the, the trout beads are meant to mimic um, a trout or salmon egg. A lot of guys don't like using um, real eggs or they like to use you know, something artificial, whether it be uh, a plastic bait or a fly. Um, and one of the options that we do have is uh, they're plastic eggs. Um, they are scented in a couple different things. Some of them are crawfish scented, some of them are anise scented. The extra scent helps to um, attract fish or appeal to the fish. So it's not just plastic scented. All right, so now we're over here and we've got some live bait sitting in front of us. Tell us what types 
do we have here in front of us? Well, we got a couple different baits here. Um, we've got wax worms, which are a uh, bee moth larva. Um, spikes, um, which are just maggots. Um, butter worms, some night crawlers, and then we've got some packaged um, salmon egg sacs. Okay, so what, do people have a preference? Uh, do the fish have a preference? Um, I'd say more so than not, um, most of your anglers are going to be using um, egg sacs. Okay. Um, but again, you know, you have a lot of other options as far as live bait. Um, and you'll see, you'll see other fishermen using different, um, uh, different baits. It, you know, again, it's personal preference. So now that we have all our gear, let's talk regulations. There are some rules that you need to follow when you're heading out. Uh, let's talk about Catherine Creek. What are some of the things that fishermen need to follow when they're out there on opening day and throughout the whole season? Well, as far as the season goes, the uh, season opens on April 1st. It runs until December 31st. Uh, a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, you can't use treble hooks on the creek. It's single hook only. Um, on Catherine Creek, you can't use live minnows. You can only use um, you know, dead or salted minnows. Um, you're only allowed to keep one rainbow a day, and you're allowed three trout a day. And uh, the minimum length is 15 inches on uh, trout and landlocked salmon. Okay. Now, do people come around and really enforce these rules uh, on opening day if it's super busy, um, or even you know the first weekend of the season? Uh, how do people regulate that? Well, there will be DEC officers out. Um, a lot of times they're out in uniform. They'll, you, sometimes you'll see them out. Um, and they'll be out in plain clothes, and you only recognize them maybe after they've caught somebody for violating a fishing regulation. Okay, so they are checking. And why is that important, really, to, to manage the creeks around here? Well, it helps to maintain the fish population and to help ensure that maybe an angler isn't keeping more fish than, uh, than they're maybe supposed to, uh, making sure that they're not using treble hooks so they're not hurting the fish uh, maybe anymore. You know, snagging, snagging is illegal. Um, you know, and a lot of, a lot of times um, you maybe accidentally hook a fish in a fan or in the side or something and you can't keep that fish. That fish has to be put back if it wasn't caught legally. Okay. So now if people do want some more information, where can they head? Where's the best place to find a list of some of these rules and regulations for all the surrounding creeks in our area? You can find all the information on the DEC's website. Um, we're also in Region 8, so you can always contact uh, Region 8 uh, DEC office in Avon, New York. Okay. And now you do need a license, is that right? Correct. Okay, so don't get caught without a license. It's really simple. Here's how you can get a license. The best place to start is the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation website. You can get a license right online. Just create an account and fill in all the necessary information. Or you can also call or look up a license issuing agent location near you. A one-day pass starts around $5. There are also seven-day passes and annual passes. And once you have a license, you're good to go. So get ready, we're about to head out and check out the creeks. Join me right after the break. And now it's opening day of trout fishing season and I think I look the part if I do say so myself. Special shout out to our director Randy Phillips for hooking me up. So now we're headed out to Catherine Creek and we're gonna catch up with some anglers. All right, we're sitting on the edge of the water here with Tim. Tim, how's it going today? Not too bad. Had a couple uh, good fish earlier. Uh, it's slowing down later in the day, but not too bad. It's going actually pretty good. I caught two fish, catch and release. Really? About four pounds, yeah. For the first couple hours, it was pretty steady here. Everybody was uh, either catching, catching some fish and getting some hits and taking a few fish home. Now that the sun's out, she's gotten a little slow, but considering the conditions, it hasn't been a bad day. The, the river seems a little lower, but there's still fish here. Yeah, there's a few. <laughs> you gotta work for them. And a long day of fishing. You certainly work up an appetite, but lucky for the anglers, they don't have to go too far to find a warm meal. And now I'm here with Doug from PDR's Catering. They come out here every year and set up their grills and the line is forming. Doug, how's it going today? Oh, good, very good, very busy. It's been crazy all morning. I've cooked uh, 
Oh, I've been trying. Well, I don't know what time is it now. Is it past lunchtime yet? I've been eating. We've been eating since about 7 a.m. And you would have thought it was already lunchtime, you know. It's, so what are you cooking out here? Uh, I'm cooking uh, hot. This is the mild sausage, and I got hot sausage on. And over here we do the, we do the hot dogs, foot long dogs, regular dogs, cheeseburgers, hamburgers. And then Rick is back here doing the fresh cut french fries. Now you guys come up here every year. How many years have you been coming up to Catherine Creek? 30. 30 years. Yeah, he's 34, so it's 30 years. Now what do you love about it? What's your favorite part about being here on opening day with all the action? So, all the fishermen that come over. I've made a lot of friends since I've been here, you know. So I met this guy, Rick. I met him up here when he was still a state trooper. Now he's my French fry cook. I probably know two, three hundred people here by first name. Not that I always get them all, that I get them right. <laughs> I try. And now the fishermen, the anglers, what are their, what's their reaction when they come up and see you guys every year and get your food? They complain I'm not here early enough that they, they can't wait to get here to have a hot sausage sandwich. Now tell me just why do you love fishing overall? What brings you out here on opening day right from the start? Uh, we've always done it all my life. My grandpa was a big fisherman. Uh, just kind of a family thing. Get you out of the house and it's uh, in the fresh air. It's the best thing you can do. Get away from it all. And if you got a problem, they go away. Well, I've always liked fly fishing, and it's really cool to see a trout come up and hit the fly that you make yourself. So it's always been cool to see. Oh, uh, you, you know, I get together with the same group of guys. We come out here and, uh, you know, give each other a little hard time and, and enjoy a little fishing. And, you know, some years we catch a lot, other years we don't, but it's, it's still nice and relaxing, you know, to me, myself, to get out of the woods and sit near a stream. Fishing is a really cool experience. You get different types, different feels for it. It's always great to get a nice big one. I, I personally like to do more bass fishing and I'm part of a Bass Masters club during my school. I just love it, outdoors. Just something you know to do with my family and it's just they've been doing it so I figured I might as well keep doing it and so on and so forth. Oh, I've been fishing since I've been, you know, 12 years old. I've been fishing as, soon, as long as I can remember. And what's your fondest memory? Uh, well, I caught a huge bass one time and my cousin had to wade out halfway into the pond to get it untangled for me. <laughs> Catching my beautiful one down in Vanatton, the one I had mounted. Yeah. What kind of fish was that? He was a brown trout, 29 inches I had mounted. Mine would be catching a nice sized carp. Um, we got it right in our pond when we first moved to where we were. Um, and that was pretty cool, feeling how it felt on the pole and then getting it on shore. Salmon fishing up in Pulaski. Yeah, October's the best time of year there. Ice fishing with my grandpa, probably he uh, got a big kick out of me being afraid of the ice. <laughs> We've got three generations we've been coming out. I've been coming out here like 12 years. Uh, it's just a family tradition. So I raise my own trout and we bring the grandkids up there and let the kids catch the trout. And, you know, it's fun for me to catch them, but seeing a little five-year-old catch a fish is, is something to see. So this is where we leave you in the middle of Catherine Creek on opening day. And now what I've learned today is it's all just about having fun. Whether you catch a fish or not, just get out there and spend some time with your friends and family. You've got plenty of time. Trout season lasts until October 15th. So I'm going to go cast and try it for myself. We'll see you next time.